October has been a weird month, as it always is. It seems like everybody gets some spookiness in their brains. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the weird gaming stories that captivated us in October 2021. Starting off at number 10, a guy in Japan got arrested for breaking into his ex-girlfriend's apartment to steal her Nintendo Switch. Now, this sounds dumb, and it is, but it's got more layers to it, and that's why it's weird. During their relationship, this guy apparently loaned her money and she didn't pay it back, so it wasn't just that he wanted to, I guess, play Metroid Dread or whatever. It was that he wanted to cover part of the money that was stolen. However, one, breaking into your ex's apartment to steal anything is a bad idea. Don't do that. Two, whether or not it was to cover part of the expenses of money she had borrowed from him, he stole a Nintendo Switch, and I think it was probably to play Metroid Dread or whatever. Uh, Paper Mario. Uh, it's not like a Nintendo Switch's currency that you can go buy groceries with or anything. I'm sure she had money to steal too, but he stole a Nintendo Switch. At number nine, a Game Boy like keychain, I guess, finger held. You can't call it a handheld. Launched a Kickstarter. And like the thing I thought when I first saw it was, oh, a little Game Boy. They must have used like a really high density pixel screen to make it so you can play Game Boy games on a tiny little keychain thing. That's a, a novel. Probably not something I would buy, but whatever. Uh, a doesn't play Game Boy games, plays a few retro styled games that are made specifically for it. And here, now this is where we get to the particularly weird part. It absolutely blew past its Kickstarter goal immediately. The Kickstarter goal was $15,000. As of this recording, the campaign is not done yet, and they are at $184,000. For like a tiny little thing with a tiny little screen that plays Tetris, a lizard platformy looking thing, a really terrible looking dungeon crawler, asteroids, and Snake. Not like Metal Gear Solid, like the old retro game Snake. And they're not called these things because none of them are official, obviously. I don't know. It's bizarre to me. I can't imagine wanting to buy it. Like, I imagine it being a thing that I get for free to make me feel good about going somewhere or something. It's not to crap on it. It's impressive. But, like, seems like it should come out of one of those, like, gumdrop machines for, like, a quarter. And number eight, in New World, the Amazon MMO, apparently you cannot use any variant of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos' name. You want to play as Bezos with a zero for the O? Nope. You want to play as Jeff B? Nope. Now, I'm not going to be able to tell you if Jeff Bezos has, like, reserved this name and is just that excited to play New World, or if they don't want people impersonating him, although I'm going to say that if I encountered somebody named Bezos in Amazon's New World, I wouldn't go, oh my god, that's probably Jeff Bezos for real, man. I don't know. I can't really imagine why it would really matter, but maybe I'm not as creative as I thought. I mean, it's no big loss. My intention was to play this game as Bill Gates. And number seven, Deathloop's Jason Kelly, the voice of the protagonist, did not have a PlayStation 5 and actually tweeted out, if anyone can get me a copy of the game and the PS5, I would appreciate it. Bethesda, now a Microsoft company, bought him a PS5 in the game, which I think is where a little bit of the weirdness starts to come in, but also... I mean, yeah, it's cool that they went ahead and bought him a PS5 and a copy of the game that he's a voice actor in. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Bethesda was the company that determined how much this man was paid to be a voice actor in the game. That's all I'm saying here. At number six, a uh, gaming mattress went on sale in Japan because, I mean, Japan obviously makes a product called the gaming whatever any product. Like, insert product here. The gaming tea kettle, indeed. I don't know. This one, it's bizarre to me. It's a thin foam mattress that apparently is made by a reputable mattress company. I don't know anything about Japanese mattress companies, so eh. But it's being sold as ideal as a place to sleep after a day of gaming or to sprawl out on while gaming which 
I mean, assuming you have a decent mattress, isn't that every mattress? Like, all of the bad mattresses are the only ones that are not that. All the good ones are ideal for both sleeping on after a day of gaming and also sprawling out on to game with, like, a handheld or pointed at the television with a controller or whatever. It just seems like a very strange product. I don't know. I will say it's probably more useful than, like, a gaming salad bowl or something. At number five, hey, do you want to look like an absolute freak walking down the street wearing a high-tech mask for the pandemic? Well, Razor's got the mask for you. It's a RGB COVID mask. It's got LEDs, you know, the colored kind that every Razor product has. It's got active filtration, which means it uses energy beyond the LEDs, and it sells itself as having a cyberpunk style. I have seen people say that this thing looks cool, and I just want to include a definitive rebuttal to this. No, it does not look cool. It looks like you're bored of spending your money on other things. So whatever abundance of money you have, you've decided to spend on a very stupid looking face mask that shouldn't exist. Like the thing I would ask somebody if I saw it is, are you going to one of those like cyber goth dance parties? that was a meme like 10 years ago. Why do you have that? And at number four, Choo Choo Charles was announced, a new game, survival horror, in which you ride your own train around an island, either hunting or being hunted by Choo Choo Charles, who is also a train and a spider and a monster. Yeah, if that doesn't set your weirdometer off, I don't know what will, but it's such a novel concept that it might actually be an interesting game. I can't help but think that it was inspired by somebody making a terrifying Thomas the Tank Engine meme though. You know, or they replace some like monster's head with Thomas, or they replace Thomas's head with a monster. I don't know. And then for some reason, the train is a spider. Like, that's, that's the thing that I, uh, I don't know how they came up with. What if the monster train is a spider? It's probably something they did so that the monster train wouldn't have to be stuck on the tracks. But then why is the monster a train? I don't know. Lots of questions. Still interesting. Very weird. At number three, more classified tank specifications were leaked onto the War Thunder game forums. I don't know what it is about this game, but people who have access to classified information about one of the more important aspects of a military's arsenal can't seem to stop leaking it onto this game's forums. Like, we covered the other guy leaking classified tank stuff onto these forums before. I didn't think this would happen again. In my head, that wasn't gonna be a thing that we saw repeat itself. And if I'm honest, I don't even care about the details at this point. There seems to be a massive security loophole in the fact that people who have access to military tank stuff like video games and like video games to be more accurate than they need to be. Because it seems like they're always correcting the video game company that has the tanks with the actual tank information that they stole from the military. Maybe you can tell, but this wouldn't be something I would do. I don't need to be proven right in this situation. They're gonna figure out who it was. You know that, right? And you're gonna get in trouble. Why? Why do it? At number two, you know that Xbox mini fridge that we were kind of, I don't know, we talked about it before in weird gaming stories. It was kind of like, I don't know why this exists. Like, I thought its existence was the weird aspect of the story, but it's gotten weirder. The Xbox mini fridge pre-orders sold out within 15 minutes. First off, it's a Target exclusive, which as you know, Target is not exactly the place most people would consider a gaming mecca in terms of retailers, but it became available for pre-order at 9.30 a.m. on October 19th, and within 15 minutes, that was that. It sold out. I don't know if they're gonna keep making this, but it's apparently a hot item. If I were them, I would, obviously. But I, I want to know what they think. Like, are they as surprised as, you know, any normal person by this? 
And finally, at number one, we had some dudes do some pretty unconventional runs of two very popular From Software games. First, streamer slash YouTuber Lil Laggy decided to take on Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, did a run where he beat all of the bosses and mini bosses and got the two endings, the true one included, in under two hours, so he was able to refund the game on Steam. And then another guy, Dylan Rudism Beck, beat Dark Souls 3, playing it with Morse code on a single button. Now these are both insane feats, things that I cannot fathom doing myself, that these folks pulled off with relative ease. Congratulations to them both. Not only are they fantastic at these games, creative, and willing to do what others won't, but they're also weird. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is of course a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications and as always thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks